Our second question is from a listener named Sydney, and she asks, how do I become more emotionally well? Sydney, thank you for that question. That's a very simple but very loaded loaded question mm -hmm. because we are we are emotional beings. Now, with that being said, there is this myth that there's 32 to 36 to 40 different emotional states. When I mean, the research shows us that in reality, we actually only have four mm. emotional states. And, and, and those are joy, sadness, fast approaching danger, and slow approaching danger. So what does fast approaching danger look like? That's like the, um, the surprise, like someone jumps out at you and scares you. That's a surprise. Mm -hmm. um, and then the slow approaching danger would be more of like, a, uh, think of a gaze, like a, uh, almost like a frustrated facial expression, something that's off in the distance. It might be coming near you and you're starting to watch this thing like, mm, I don't know if I trust you. Mm. So those are our four emotional states. And from those four states, everything else is a derivative of those four. The reason I say that is because it can be intimidating to go, I want to improve my emotional health, but I have 32 different emotions that I need to manage. Mm -hmm. No, you have four different emotions that, that you get to manage. Think of our lives if we didn't have emotion. Mm -hmm. Think of our lives if you never had a tear of joy or a tear of sadness. I'd ask like, what's, what's the point? Like, yeah. what's, what's the point of us being here if we didn't have emotions? And it's interesting because a lot of times the emotion too is the perspective that's put with it, mm -hmm. right? If I showed you a picture of a person crying, I just showed you the picture and I said, Brandy, what's, what's this person doing? They're crying. Why are they crying? Oh, I don't know. Maybe they just received really sad news. Maybe they lost a family member or a pet or, or something along those lines. And I say, well, actually, they were just told a really really funny joke <laughs> right so the same response happened but our consciousness changed why it happened mm -hmm. for for that person so our emotions are, are a beautiful thing and and we should experience them and i think that's where i'm going with this is that emotions come and then they go mm -hmm. so if you want to improve your emotional health it's not about shutting down emotions it's the ability to choose that i can have a response to this mm -hmm. versus a reaction. And when we choose to have the response, we then allow ourselves to go, wow, this emotion is, emotion is a guest. Mm -hmm. It's coming and then it's leaving. And, and it's okay for us to sit in that for a little bit and decide how long do we want this guest? Mm -hmm. it's, it's your house. You can have your guest there for a month, two months, two hours, a week. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. You get to decide how long do I want to sit with that emotion? If it's a happier emotion, you probably want to sit with that longer yeah. than with a fear based emotion. Mm -hmm. So the emotional health is choosing that response versus reaction. And then having the, the reality that while wow, our perspective on emotion changes how we interact with the emotions and that we should have emotions and, and we should let them come and then we should just let them go. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love the analogy of your emotions being a guest because as you were talking, the thing that came up for me was your emotions aren't your identity. I, I am a pretty emotional person, I would say. Um, like I, if I do the like Myers-Briggs testing, right, and personality test, whatever it's called, I test an F, <laughs> which is feelings. Like mm. I, I respond in my feelings. I don't respond by logically thinking. Um, and that's just more of like a nature, but that doesn't mean that I can't grow. Right. But for years I was like, no, I'm a feeler. I'm a feeler. I, I have emotions. I need to feel all these emotions. But then it almost became my identity where this analogy of like, no, it, it's, it's a guest. And, um, I watched this movie inside out. Mm, You've seen it, right? Yeah. There's these emotions, there's, there's joy and there's anger and there's sadness and all these things. And I remember years ago when I watched it everyone was like, Oh, Brandy, you're anger, you're anger. And I'm like, Oh, okay, I'm anger. And I just like took on that like identity that my nature is to naturally respond with an anger response, right? Mm -hmm. No, that doesn't have to be the case. Like I can respond with joy, I can respond with sadness and all these things. And so there was a level of healing I had to go through. Um, and there was a level of acknowledging, like, 
emotions are good. There, there was a time in my life where I was like, emotions are bad. And I was like a numb, like I, I went from like super emotional to I'm anger to now I have to numb everything. And, and now I just feel free mm-hmm. to like, I let myself have the emotions. They're my guests whenever they come and then they can leave and it's okay. And I, I want to be sensitive because I just, I'm thinking of one of my friends right now and she is such an emotional person. Like she probably more would identify with the 32, 67, 150 emotion options versus four Mm -hmm. because the, the free spirit that she has, she very much is like, Oh, but it doesn't, the joy doesn't explain it enough. I, I need, I need joy, but I also need awe Mm -hmm. and I need, I need to marvel. Like I feel the emotion of marveling, like Mm -hmm. things like that. And, and I, I want to say yes. Like there is a level of like, you might need other words to describe how you're feeling. And that's not a bad thing, but that doesn't make it a a new emotion. It's just another word to kind of describe under that, the category of the four. And I don't, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing to have other words because language is so powerful. Actually, Brene Brown talks about this in one of her books that I, I watched an interview on it, but she says like, we don't want to limit emotion because our language is powerful and our language describes all mm-hmm. of these things. But coming back to my original point, just because you have these hundreds of words to describe how you're feeling, if they really do come down to these, these four feelings and emotions, that's great. All of it's great, but it's not your identity. It's not who you are. Who you are is a gift. Who you are is, oh, I could just go off on a rant of who you are because you're, you're so good. Your emotions don't dictate that. If you're struggling, you had someone pass away, you're sad. You do not become sadness. Like that is not your identity. And I think in a world where identity is a hot topic and all the things, the biggest thing I want people to know is you are who you are. Your emotions help, but they're, they're, they're not who you are. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think if you want the complexity, Brene Brown provides that Yeah, with that. Dr. Lisa Feldman Barrett brings it back to how emotions are created mm-hmm. in, in her book. And then Jimmy Valvano, when we get the Jimmy V week, when college basketball yes. starts off, he gives us the simple explanations of really how we should live each day yeah. with our emotions. So mm-hmm. as that comes up in the fall, uh, fall to winter time, I highly recommend just, or you can put it up on YouTube, pull up Jimmy Valvano, Jimmy Valvano's speech and that, just the FC speech, the FC right? speech and yeah. just listen to really how we should live our days. Mm-hmm. The sad part is we typically don't learn that until it's too late, mm-hmm. until we have diagnoses that limit how long we're going to be here or something tragic happens. But really every day there's stuff to be joyful about. Mm-hmm. There's stuff to that can make you sad. Mm-hmm. There's stuff that can, can create a little bit of fear in you, but you get to make that choice of not being limited by that fear. Yeah. So it's the beautiful thing with emotional health is, is making that choice. And I, I would go on to say that you know, there, we do want to put some constraints on it, but Mm -hmm. there are times to lean into the emotion and times not. That's the ability of choosing to respond versus react. Yes. Like if we're having a meeting (laughs) and a thought comes up in my head that as a sad thought that maybe isn't on topic with the meeting, I may not want to, in the middle of that meeting, ball my eyes out. Right. And and especially if it's like a partnership type meeting and, and they're like, why are you crying about your dog? Like, what, how did we get there? But it may be, you know what? Like, okay, I'm going to, I'm not going to sweep it under the rug, but I'm going to keep that on the back burner. Mm-hmm. And when I'm in a safe area, and that's when I'm going to bring that emotion back. And that's when I'm going to decide to let it in, mm-hmm. experience it, and then let it go. Yeah. So there, there is the a transparency. There is a boundaries that that Mm -hmm. comes up with that and and i think especially with fear and with anger that's a big one yeah of like it's okay to be fearful it's okay to have anger but just be careful when you decide that you want to experience that emotion that it's not in the heat of the moment because once you say something as much as you apologize you -hmm. can't take it back right so it's better to just bite your tongue there's no winning an argument Mm -hmm. like bite it let yourself get to a safe place, look back on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that as it comes and and it goes, that your whole perspective on that situation will change. Yeah. 
And Sydney, I, I love this question too, because it makes me wonder, are you pursuing physical and mental and spiritual health already? But the thing you're struggling with might be emotional health because mm -hmm. I, I've been there. You know, I yeah. think we all have seasons where maybe we're working out and we're feeling physically well, we're, eat, we're eating well and like great, but then our emotional health is just struggling, right? And I think our goal and our hope is that we are we are well, like mm -hmm. all of those things we become, we can become well in all of those areas. And, and so Sydney, I love this question because I, I love that you're pursuing wellness, like in, yeah. and, and whole, really wholeness in who you're designed to be and who you're meant to be.